Hey everyone, it's Jessica Shire and welcome back to the channel. Today I have a video hop, it's a little mini hop, and it is with Amanda at Pear Blossom Press and JC Gasper. So we decided to get together and do a sketch challenge. So we took one of the sketches that Scrapbook and Cards magazine offers on their website and they have quite a few different years and all different seasons. So the one we're using is actually from fall 2018. And I think it's just fun how other people interpret card sketches. So it'll be interesting to see what the other two do. But here is my video. I am going to be using the Art Impressions, the Art Impressions and Scrapbook.com's poinsettia set. And this is exclusive to Scrapbook.com. I really appreciate Art Impressions and Scrapbook.com for sending this to me. And I am very excited to use this because the images in this stamp set are just beautiful. I'm also going to be pairing it with a stencil, This and this is a Brutus Monroe stencil for the month of December. It's very Art Deco-ish, so I thought it would be kind of cool to pair it with this very elegant poinsettia stamp set. I'm going to be doing some ink blending, so I got out my glass media mat. I taped it down over top of a piece of Arches watercolor paper. This is the cold press, which I did cut down to about a 3 by 5 inch rectangle. I'm going to use my makeup brush over the top to blend on some antique linen distress ink and this is going to be very light. I just wanted a slight texture in the background. This doesn't take too long because I did want it to be a pretty light ink blending. So then I can pull up that stencil and reveal the pattern on the watercolor paper. So you can find the links to Amanda's and JC's videos down below and also the link to the card sketch that we are using today. I also have it popped up on the screen here in the corner if you'd like to take a look and, and see how I make this card sketch more of my own style. So since I'm using watercolor paper, I am going to be watercoloring today. So I took out the Art Impressions and Scrapbook.com's poinsettia set. I'm going to be using this large bunch of branches and there's some holly and berries in there and it's just really pretty, very detailed. I'm going to stamp that with some VersaFine Clear Nocturne ink several times to get a really solid impression because that Arches watercolor paper is pretty textured. Once I have the image stamped down, I'm going to get rid of the stamp platform, set that aside for later, and then tape down my little rectangle piece onto that glass media mat again. For the watercoloring, I'm going to be using the Kiritaki Starry Colors. This is a six pan set. It's been out for quite some time and it just has some really lovely gold shades in it. So there's six different colors of gold. I do have a example sheet of all the colors just above it. That way it's easier to tell. They are pretty similar to their pan set, but I like seeing the colors on actual paper. So I just have a Royal Lang Nickel watercolor brush and a cloth off to the left to this is going to be some pretty messy watercoloring. Um, I find that with the with these gold ones, you don't really have to be too precise. They're just very shimmery and they're going to look beautiful basically no matter what you do with them. So I'm using the red gold number 902 to paint in the poinsettia flowers, the, the parts that would be like the red or the white. And this is going to be my darkest color on here. And then for the leaves, I'm going to use the white gold, which is the lightest color of gold in this set. And I'm going to paint that onto all of the leaves, so the background leaves. I'm going for a very monotone, gold, cream, light brown kind of color scheme for this card. And then one of my favorite colors in this watercolor set is the champagne gold. It has a really dramatic flash to it. When you tilt the paint in the light, it really flashes at you. And I'm going to use that color in all of the holly leaves, which there isn't a whole bunch of them, but it does make a difference using this darker medium tone and lighter tone gold colors. So I don't have a whole lot of contrast here. I'm going to bring in some Distress Inks and Vintage Photo and Brush Corduroy, mainly using the Vintage Photo to darken up some of that red gold paint that I painted onto the 
poinsettia flowers and also to darken up the berries and the insides of the poinsettias. I'll use a little bit of the brush corduroy, pretty watered down just throughout the whole painting to kind of blend everything together with that vintage photo. So I decided to add a bit of a shadow around this floral arrangement and I'm going to use the brush corduroy again, also very watered down still and just paint a outline, kind of heavy handed. And then I'll go back through and blend it out a bit more and widen out that shadow. I think this just adds a bit of contrast and will definitely help make this poinsettia arrangement stand off from this very monotone colored card. So I cut a piece of craft paper. This is also from Paper Tray Ink. And I'm going to stamp the holly berry and leaf bunch. This is like a little tiny stamp that came in that point set, a stamp set along the border. So if you looked at the sketch, you'll see that there's a bit of a border on that left hand side. So this is going to represent that. I'm going to stamp five of them all the way down and use some gold embossing powder. This is the gilded embossing powder from Brutus Monroe. So I do do the holly bunches in batches. I stamp the first two and then go ahead and heat emboss those and then stamp the other three. I let that point set a watercolor image dry a bit and I'm going to stamp the sentiment. I'm going to cluster it just at the top and it just says joy to the world. I'm going to erase the guidelines that I drew on that craft paper real quick and then add on that stencil and point set a watercolor piece over the top. So the VersaFine Nocturne ink is very, it's a very wet ink, but it's still a pigment ink and it still takes quite a bit to dry, especially on watercolor paper, I think. So I kept dipping my fingers into it and I was getting little black smudges everywhere. So I used the mono sand eraser to kind of erase those away as best I could. I'm going to use some clear embossing powder over the top of that sentiment just to make sure that I don't keep dipping my fingers into it and smudging it everywhere. So before I mount this piece to a top fold Nina Desert Storm craft card base, I also added a piece of looks like a rustic white uh, cardstock from also Paper Tray Ink. I decided to add on some Baker's Twine right over where that seam is, where the craft paper and the watercolor paper meets on that card panel. I'm just gonna tie a little bow and then I can trim off the tails with my scissors. And I do also add a bit of multimedia matte glue to the knot on that bow, that, that way it doesn't move and will stay intact. I wanted to pop this panel up a bit before I added it to that card base. So I'm gonna use some of this foam mounting tape that I have for dimension. This stuff I don't recommend, like I always say every time I use this, it's just what I have and what I'm trying to use up before I find something different. And I'm just gonna add that to the whole background and then take off the backer sheets and center that onto my card base. All right, you guys, that is it for me. I hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to check out the description box below for all the products that I use in today's video. And also you can find Amanda's and JC's channels and their video links down below. So I can't wait to see what they did and how they interpreted this card sketch from Scrapbook and Cards Magazine. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you have not already. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it. I appreciate you and I'll see you in the next one. Meh, meh.